what we thought we would do is take people around town and really see minimize it because we haven't um what's the word for it? We're small town. Uh, small family business, small town. And we're really not as uh you know, we're not uh, corporate big glass tower kind of place. So yeah, there's the local police department. Uh, we have uh, four full-time offices, two part-time offices. It's funny, I know them all personally. I don't know how this is going to work with the GoPro. So if I look like I'm sort of in the other lane so I can point the GoPro the right way. Uh, I apologize, Caleb. So we're going to do the first one right here. So I'm going to find a little wide. So right here. Uh, you know, we're going to get killed. Um, that's, the, that's the boot store right there. Well, actually, it's a boot and gun store. I mean, how many small towns have a boot and gun store? You know, only in the rural part of the world, right? So what I really wanted to show you was, as you see the bins there, we're a farming community. Really, at the end of the day, Napa's putting up a new building now. Um, so it, 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 it's a growing little community, but I keep having to tell myself that I've been here for years, so this didn't just happen overnight. Lonely Prairie doesn't have a lot of office space. So, these houses here. So, we used to have a, a building, a new building, an older building over here where the new shipping department is. But these two houses here, uh, when we ran out of room in the offices in the, in the old building, well, ran out of room, we only had four offices. Uh, it was a double wide trailer. And it was literally a double wide trailer with a Coleman heater in it. But then, so anyway, we bought this house right here, uh, and we turned that into offices. And then the, the brown one, and then the blue house, we turned that into, bought that house, and turned that into offices. And, and so, got the corporate office, and so Tyler and Trevor, the twins, which you guys have all seen over the years, and all the advertising and so forth, were moving out of the house, and I said, hey, I got an idea. You guys wanna live next door to each other since you lived across the hall from each other all these years? And then um, Trevor proceeded to get himself married and have kids, and so he had to have a bigger house, and so he uh, moved out and kind of kicked him out because we needed a place for our engineers. And so now our engineers literally are in this brown house. We're not in a uh, big ivory tower like you'd see at uh, Ford Motors or GM or something like that. And, and Tyler still lives in the blue house. Some people would chuckle, but I'm, I'm kind of proud of this place. You know, we, we, we've, we've done well with it, and we're going with it. And, Right, so the building straight ahead, the big one, uh, that's our, our shipping building. And and so if you notice, there's a guardrail there because in the winter time it gets a little icy and the guy that plows the snow has a tendency to slide down the hill in your building. And so, I mean, it's just weird how we have to do things just because of where we live and, and the small town we're in. I bought the company from my father back in 06 and 07 and that's when we put up what we call heavy manufacturing, this building right here. But what's really funny, so before we built that heavy manufacturing building, you can see here the power line, right? I'll never forget. So before we put the heavy manufacturing up, uh, we, the city came to us and said, hey, can we get an easement? We'd like to run across there with the power poles. And we went, all right, how much? 1500 bucks. My dad and I looked at each other, started high-fiving, and we are going to go out for dinner. And now I'm going, oh, why did I do that? You know, but that was way back when. Right? We didn't have any money. We were still growing. We were still growing now, but I mean, that was good old days back then. And so it's funny. Now I, I could have went further, but you know, we took the fifteen hundred bucks. Hindsight's twenty twenty. So small townish, right? So let's check this out. This is the funeral home. Okay. We're always one of the first people to know somebody died in town. But if you come to work, right? Ah oh, man, the, you know, the hearse is out. Who died? I don't know. The guy in the casket. I moved down here to seventh grade, the spring of seventh grade, and I, and I played hockey in Rochester. And I go to everybody. I said, "Hey, I said, um, when is uh, when is the hockey sign?" They go, "Huh?" I said, "What's hockey sign?" Well, they flood Central Park right here in the winter time. You want to go skating? And right then and there, my uh, hockey career was over. I had to learn how to play football. And let me tell you, hockey is easier to learn. Uh, this is the Blue Prairie High School. Uh, they just um, we did a lot of it, I think it was, two, three years ago. Uh, that's where I graduated from high school. Um, <laughs> I don't know how. I shouldn't, though. I think they just wanted to be gone. Uh, as you can see, it's just, a, it's just a quaint little small town, you know, like every small town in, in America. And you know, we're proud to be able to support the community and be here with the community. So this is the Booming Prairie Pine Spring Pool. The city has really, really done a great job um, 
improving the pool. Uh, it's great bed. Uh, yeah, they do chlorinate it and cut it out. Uh, and so, you know, you just gotta overlook the geese in the fall. You'll get over it. And, uh, and so, yeah. And yeah, I've, uh, I've spent some time after I was running from that police department in there. And that was a long time ago. I couldn't do it today. They raised the fence though because of me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we'll sit here and patiently wait for the city street cleaner. And I never understood the whole concept of a street sweeper. You know, it's kind of like I didn't know what a lame duck president was until Clinton. I, couldn't, I just couldn't grasp it in high school. I couldn't, I couldn't get it, right? So the street sweeper. Well, I didn't really grasp the street sweeper until uh, I, I was on the city council. I got on the city council because um, I wanted to build a house on an empty lot in a, in a, in a zone farm. And so I figured, you know, city council is a preference, but uh, that didn't work. <laughs> but I did learn that the reason they sweep the streets is because the leaves and, the, and, and, all, the, and all the garbage and everything gets into the storm sewers and it, and, and it plugs them up. And so that's why you see them sleeping in the fall and the spring and stuff and so you can pick up all that, that uh, so it doesn't get in the street, it doesn't get in the storm sewer. So a little tidbit <laughs> how I know So this is my corporate office here. This is uh, this is where we are now. Um, our corporate office here. Uh, you see this as an entry to it. And someday I'll have I'll have Caleb we'll do a video to show you. So this is my father's building. When I bought the company I had to give him a lifetime build, at least on the building. And so I moved him into this building when we bought this. This building was with the offices. And, and so I moved him in there. And you can tell he's an international tractor fan. And someday we'll give the a tour of, uh, of what's inside there. So this is our, our maintenance shop for the trucks. Um, Catch-all kind of place. And, uh, and so we're coming out. Um, Kirkenberg Industries. Uh, we have a new product that we bought a company. And... Uh, Caleb will be doing videos for that in the future. That's our uh, hook lift. Uh, because I was selling to the guys in the hook lift business 30 years ago. I said, Craig, you gotta get yourself a hook lift and get about 20 containers. I mean, that's where you'll make the money. So, I don't even know how my father would let me do it. And so we bought the hook lift, bought a bunch of containers, and Steve Hansen and I said, if I had a nickel for every time I had to call you about a minimizing question, well, you're in the garbage truck every day. You know, I don't go across the tracks often. So. And, and that's really funny because people get used to staying in their own little, even in a small town, right? You love your big city and you probably never even leave an eight-block area where you live. I mean, wow, it's crazy you even do it in a small town. Walsh Garbage, uh, it's, it's the next building down. And um, Billy just sold that to a uh, guy from Portland. Um, so Billy's uh, riding life out into retirement. But I had to laugh the other morning. So he's, he's, still, he's still running the route for the guy. And... You know, Billy, I don't know, man, the guy gets up early. And so, and I don't get up before the sun ever. And so it's funny. So Billy comes and he's about an hour late. And I said, oh, what? Now that you're punching the clock, you take your time? And he goes, I'm kind of retired. And so it's just, it's just funny how the moment you retire, I mean, he's like, now he's just coasting. It's like an hour later. And uh, so you, when I'm an hour later, Caleb, you don't want to retire. <laughs> And so, so that's our simple little tour of, of, of Bloomin' Prairie. And a uh, little tidbit, and, and Caleb will probably throw that in later, is we used to be a bootlegging town during the Prohibition. Big bootlegging town. And uh, there's a lot of history to that. So, thanks, and I hope you enjoyed the tour, and have a great day.